So today we're going to um, sort out the visas. Uh, we did try and do the e-visas online when we were in Spain, um, but I don't know where the office was shut, but the normal three days it takes didn't happen. So we have to go into town, into the capital, um, and try and get that sorted out. And the reason we're all kind of dressed up is apparently it's a sign of disrespect if you don't wear long trousers and smart clothes. So we've got the whole family going to cram into a taxi to go to the, uh, the offices. You and me, we're family The bond that we share is as deep as the sea No matter how rough things may come to be You and me So we head into Paramaribu, which is the capital of Suriname and try to find the Department of Health, Immigration, Maritime Authority and the Military Police. We were surprised to see such a mixture of religions that are followed in Suriname. Such as Christianity, there's 48% follow that, 22% Hinduism and 13% follow Islam. Also, there are many traditional religions that are practiced, focusing on the worship of nature and all living beings. But we'll tell you more about that in our next blog. Our temperatures taken uh, to see that we're healthy before we um, enter you know with the customs and everything. Here we go. Let's go kids. Right. So uh, we're just at the uh, health ministry we're just getting our um, certificate to say that we're, we're healthy. There's a bit of discrepancy about whether our tests are valid because we had our tests done within 24 hours of leaving and then we were at sea for three weeks. Uh, but now I think that's caused a bit of confusion because we're supposed to have it 24 hours or 48 hours before arriving. So we've got our papers to say that we don't need to quarantine now because of, we've been at sea for three weeks. So now we're in the place where we should be getting our e-visas, which we applied for online and paid online, but now we actually need to um, get them. If someone came in with sm who's smoking with a weapon with a dog, with sunglasses and flip-flops and vest and pants, they'd probably get arrested. Uh, so this was the e-visa place and they said in 30 minutes our visas will be ready, so we need to print it out and then we take it to customs. Um, I, I'm assuming that they're kind of just processing it now really and that's why it takes 30 minutes. Maritime Authority Suriname because um, no one's managed to sort that out online but now we're getting to the police and we have to get there we've got 13 minutes to get there that we had to go to which was the military police um, not really sure why um, they needed to know that we were here but I guess maybe they'd like to keep track of everything oh uh, we need the sim card sim card and um, like also maybe yeah yeah I know the battery pack uh, and then food you don't want to go to the lock that was the one of that that was going to the by the sim card just sim card okay yeah what is this the shop for yeah, food yeah the shop is for food or what is this shop the shop the tulip oh the tulip yes 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 yeah, tulip for food isn't it yeah for yeah, yeah, food. yeah 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 we go there it's, it's okay okay 
no cameras allowed inside the supermarket either, but um, we'll see what's in there. Bananas. Right, so shopping done. Now it is um, trying to get a SIM card. So Digital it seems to be the company that do it. So we're going to have a look in here. So I'm just out on the hunt to find a cafe with Wi-Fi so I can download the videos, upload the videos actually, for this week. I reckon that is the most profitable business to have in Suriname. So finally, after all our jobs in town, we head back to Waterland Marina and decide to get on the kayaks and do some exploring. We're going to take the kayaks uh, to the other side of the jungle so we can see the monkeys. Really? It's over there now. While Dad was trying to pull that canoe in there, he uh, he would put his hand under the thing and he pulled it, and then a massive tarantula like that big just just crawled out, and then so we all like screamed, kind of edged away. Under under the hand grip, there was this tarantula. <laughs> So now we've got to get it off. <laughs> now we're going to check every single canoe for a tarantula like Dad's doing there. Yeah, it's just really scary. We've seen some ants, and because we're emptying out the canoes to get rid of tarantulas, snakes, just normal stuff. So we found a ant raft about that big. When they're flooded in the rainforest, they form rafts, and they normally put the queen in the middle, but they just hold themselves really tightly together, and then they would normally like drift towards a safe place, and then they would climb up. And we've seen that because when we empty the water out, the raft settled, and then it was just like all the um, ants climbed up out of the canoe. And I think it's a it's a very strange phenomenon. And ants have been around way longer than humans, so they mastered farming, rafts, and all of this before humans. We're going on the canoes today, and uh, the oh, food that's going to power us, uh, that's going to like quench our hunger tonight, is the two fish that I caught from the Amazon rainforest. I gutted it, descaled it, and put it in the freezer. And tonight that. Today we managed to get up early, got the kids uh, up and out the boat before nine o'clock, which was a miracle in itself. We've managed to uh, canoe about a mile up the river. We've gone um, against the current and against the wind, and hopefully on the way back, we'll have the wind current going with us. Left, right, left, right. 
and we've entered this creek and the first thing we saw was monkeys in the trees. And then we carried on round the edge of the lake into a smaller creek and round there we've just been listening to the sounds, it's unbelievable. There's so many sounds that you can hear, just of such a variety of different sounds. We're trying to identify what animal is there for. Okay, so we found this kind of um, creek and then it goes into a kind of open lake really, a small lake. So we're going to explore around here. And then we've gone a little bit further and we were going to go on land um, just to see in the trees, but there's lots of little kind of crabs, one-clawed crabs. And um, I, d I don't think they're dangerous, but it's very muddy and um, that kind of put everyone off, really. Like crabs with one claw thing. So even these stems and trunks have a lot of spikes up them. I think this is something about preventing predators getting to the top and eating and munching all the leaves at the top. The spikes stop them climbing up. Let's see, but I think there's a wasp's nest up there, just a kind of a mound of mud that they've created. looks like some sort of abandoned jetty. This looks like a bit of an abandoned boat which is a shame because the engine looks fairly new on it but uh, obviously it's been left and uh, see what we've got in the builders. Day, we decided to take the kayaks again to find a creek that our friends had told us about that apparently goes even deeper into the jungle. Follow the red ribbon and there's a the red ribbon there and then there's a secret entrance which apparently they used to smuggle or they used to hide smuggled boats in here away from the police. It's a secret entrance into a whole new world. Here we go. Like real life arcs 
can't see them, but we can hear the monkeys in the trees. I think they're the howler monkeys. Okay, yeah, the creek's drying out a bit, so we need to get back before we get stuck in here. There was this massive bug and I thought it was a leaf, so I kind of scooped it up. And then I saw its legs, so I dipped it into the water. And then it's like this long and it comes out and starts flying towards us. So I freak and I just kind of bat it out the way with this and it goes flying into the tree. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next episode when we decide to take a trip by bus and boat to go into the heart of the rainforest. A big thanks for watching and especially thanks to our patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to become part of the patron family then follow the link in the description below or just put Mothership Adrift Patreon and I'll take you to the right place. We would really love to hear from you, so if you'd like to leave comments then go to our Facebook page or Instagram or even to our Patreon page where you can connect to us immediately. And if you want to do it, do it. Sing ho, hey long for the ride, ho, hey I'll stay by your side, ho.